Rev up your engines! Suleiman Khan. Scotty, how do I find a good, trustworthy mechanic? Everybody today is out to make money. A lot of places are chains. There's pressure on the people to sell as much as possible. I've known guys that ran shops and they said, oh, we want our average bill to the customer to be about $850. So no matter what you bring in, they're going to try to sell you $850 worth of stuff. So I never advertised. I fix cars. People know. They tell their friends. I don't waste money in advertising. They don't waste their time with somebody who's trying to rip them off. Try to find a good independent mechanic. Ask your friends. The bigger the chain, the more overhead people have, especially a dealership. Some of these big dealerships have millions in overhead every year. You're paying for their overhead. So, not such a smart idea to go there if you want to save money, you know. You got to ask around, ask your friends. And then when you go there, hey, before you go, I even have a video on how to find a good mechanic. Watch that. They give some really good in-depth tips. Andrew Werblowski says, Scotty, what do you think of a 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo? Jeep's quality has been going downhill for a long time. But at least back in 2003, Fiat didn't own them. And I've got customers with those Grand Cherokees. Yes, they're pretty much gas hogs. But you get a big truck slash SUV, it's going to be kind of a gas hog. Those were decent vehicles if you took care of them. You did have to kind of baby the automatic transmissions because that was the weak point. Those are the things that always burn out first. As they age, they often had electronic problems, but it's stuff that you could fix. The engines were pretty solid, unlike the modern day ones. If you find a good used one that had lower mileage, it could be okay. Just don't pay too much. They're not collector's items or anything. DJ J. Dillon says, what do you think of Porsche cars? Well, historically, they're interesting cars. And all Ferdinand Porsche. They made the first Volkswagen Beetle. Zippy sports cars way back in the day, in the 50s and early 60s. Air cooled boxer engines. Eh, that's old technology. It's got a few amount of people that really like them and stuff like that. But I mean, you can get much more horsepower out of better designs. It's a name thing now, a snob appeal. Oh, I own a Porsche. And they call it Porsche, not Porsche, but Porsche. Uh, if you want to lose money, buy a Porsche because they their values plummet like no tomorrow. And if you buy a used one, you spend a fortune fixing it. So yeah, I mean, if you want a lawn ornament, buy one cheap and park it in your front lawn. They are good looking vehicles. I'll give them that. Hansel Showcase 84 says, which Dodge is better? The Dodge Avenger or the Dodge Dart? Well, I'm not a Chrysler fan, but out of those, the Avengers better than the Dart is. The Darts are, you know, they're basically Fiat setup stuff. Fiat took over Chrysler. They started putting all this Italian stuff in them. I actually rented a Dart one time when I went to Nashville. Man, it was a little pile of junk as far as I was concerned. I mean, it did get phenomenal gas mileage because they had a tiny engine. I could tell the thing was less than a year old, but it already was flimsy. It didn't handle all that well in the rain. I, I wasn't impressed by the car. I'd never buy one. Cindy the Cat 1. Is a Dodge Challenger a good car? We got a lot of Dodge questions today. If you like speed and driving like a maniac, yeah, the Dodge Challengers are screaming cars. That said, they're not going to hold up over time. People are either going to wrap them around trees or they're going to wear the engine or transmission out by driving them way too fast. That's what those are. Those are muscle cars. And if you want a muscle car, most people don't think I'm going to keep a muscle car for 20 years and drive it for 200,000 miles. So, you know, if you got the money to spend, you want to buy a brand new one and race around feel free, just realize that its resale value won't be much and that it's going to start falling apart when it gets to be older. Stylus graphics. How do I fix water and gas tank problem? Accurate TLOA. You really have water in your gas tank, a whole bunch of it. You got to drain it out and get it all out, which is a pain in the butt. You can put in what we used to call dry gas made up north for the winter because if you do have water in your gas tank up north in the winter, it'll freeze and then it won't go through anywhere. It's basically alcohol. So if you mix that with it, that will absorb the water because alcohol absorbs water, which is the main reason you get a hangout over. If you drink a lot of rum or whiskey, you don't drink water, that starts sucking the water out of your body and then you get a headache from that from not having enough water. If you get any of this dry gas or any kind of additives that have alcohol in it, they can get rid of a certain amount. You might try that first before you go to the trouble of tearing all that down, taking a gas tank off, emptying it out, cleaning it out. A lot of times you add the treatment, the alcohol in it will absorb the water and then just burn it out and you're done. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell.